Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Nintendo Switch, 3DS, Libretro, and MAME. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation on Android with Citra MMJ. And this is news that a lot of people are probably not gonna like to hear, but I no longer recommend using Citra MMJ. So for those who are unaware, Citra MMJ is a fork of the standard version of Citra. It's designed for performance as opposed to emulation accuracy. It makes a few shortcuts and a few hacks in order to help games run a little bit faster on those devices that can't run them very well. Anyway, Citra MMJ started out as open source, but it appears that it's no longer open source. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure as to what's going on in the background with the developer on this one, but the latest few commits here have not had any source code published. And that is a massive red flag. We don't exactly know what's going into this emulator anymore. Now, it's not to say that closed source emulators are bad. I mean, Aether SX2 is partially closed source and it's absolutely fine. However, here, Citra for Android is open source. This is a fork of an open source emulator. And as such, it should probably be open source. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I don't know if the developer of this accidentally just decided not to publish the code on it. But at this point in time, I would say if you're using Citra MMJ, just be very careful about it. Instead, I'd recommend using the official version of Citra. While it's no secret that the Google Play Store version of Citra is kind of outdated. I mean, the last time it was updated was back in 2021. However, if you wanted to check out a nightly build for Android of Citra, you absolutely can. There's Canary and there's also the nightly build. The nightly build is experimental. The APK is available for it. The Canary one is even more experimental. It might have some features that the nightly build doesn't have. We've talked about these in the past, but I will drop links to both in the description below. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Ryujinx. And whether or not you use Ryu Jinx, you might appreciate this news. It's not about new features or new game compatibility. This is about emulation in general. So just a little while ago, Dolphin Emulator was used as a benchmarking tool for AMD, by AMD. And now it appears that Ryu Jinx is also starting to be used for some CPU benchmarks, interestingly enough with AMD and Zen 4. In fact, on this article from Tech Power Up, which Ryu Jinx referenced, we have PS3 emulation with RPCS3 and Red Dead Redemption. And we've got Nintendo Switch emulation with Ryu Jinx and Super Mario Odyssey. If you are curious on how a bunch of different processors stack up with RPCS3 and Ryu Jinx, I'll leave a link in the description below. I highly recommend checking out Tech Power Up's article. It's awesome to see emulation get a lot more attention on the main stage, and I think benchmarking with emulators makes a ton of sense. They're very CPU intensive. Next up here, this is a quick one. We're talking about Libretro, and more specifically, Ludo. If you don't know what Ludo is, at a high level here, it's a minimalistic front end for a lot of your emulation needs. Ludo is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it just got a brand new release. I would say that this release really isn't overly exciting. The whole purpose of it is to bump the course to the latest versions. However, if you've never tried out Ludo, I definitely recommend giving it a whirl. Next up, we're talking about MAME. MAME stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or it stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. It's entirely up to you on how you want to interpret that. Anyways, MAME just got a brand new version, version 0.248. This changelog is well written, there's a ton of information in it, and we're just covering things at a high level, so I'll leave a link to the entire changelog in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. One of the biggest things that MAME accomplished this month was the addition of a brand new system. This system is the Game Master. It's not necessarily the most popular system out there or the most well liked, but at the same time for game preservation, this is good news. If you've never seen a Game Master before or never heard about a Game Master before, I don't blame you at all. Ashens has a video here on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanted to see it more in detail. But don't get your hopes up, I don't necessarily think this is a great system overall. The Game Master was released back in 1990, and the game library for this system is about 18 games overall. It's not a big library. This system was not really that big of a success. I think the author of MAME's changelog says it the best. 
It was known for its low screen resolution, the poor quality of its software library, and now for the first time, you can relive the disappointment of all 18 games released on this system in emulation. In addition to that, MAME got the usual slew of bug fixes and overall improvements, and now MAME supports more Game Boy cartridges, including the pocket camera, the EE Prom and two axis accelerometer used by Kirby Tilt and Tumble and Command Master. It's no secret I'm a huge fan of MAME and everything they're doing, and it's also no secret that the developers of MAME are incredible. I mean, this emulator improves month over month over month. It's been around forever, and every month brings a whole bunch of changes. Last up here, we've got some really awesome news. If you've got a Switch and you've got Super Mario Maker 2, you're gonna like this news. If you don't have Super Mario Maker 2, but you are thinking about picking one up, this new level might be a system seller. Metroid Mike 64 has created something incredible, and you can try it out yourself. The Maker ID is right there at the bottom. Metroid Mike calls it Super Mario Bros. 5. It features 40 full courses spread across 8 worlds. 24 courses from Super Mario World, 14 from Super Mario Bros. 3, and 2 courses from Super Mario Bros. Mike says the gameplay is all classic Mario. They haven't designed levels to troll people or to provide people unfair advantages. They're trying to stay true to the originals. In my opinion, this creation is pretty much a game seller. If you don't have Super Mario Maker 2 but you were thinking about it, well, seeing something like this might push you to pick up the game. And if I was Nintendo, I'd be promoting the heck out of something like this. It's absolutely amazing. So massive shout out to Metroid Mike for creating this. I'm certain a lot of people, myself included, are going to be enjoying this moving forward. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. All stuff and no fluff. We talked about a ton today, let me know your thoughts about any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos, don't tempt fate, save your state.